A biblical perspective on life, culture and current events. This is 2020 on Vision. Bill Muhlenberg from Culture Watch joins us. And Bill, I really liked your article on Christian leaders and sexual integrity on your blog recently. Let's talk about that. Yeah, well, important issue. Sadly, uh, a repetitious sort of issue, right? It seems to keep happening. Uh, Christian leaders that the whole world knows about, or at least certainly the Christian world, and, you know, most are doing a great job serving the Lord, faithful, committed, uh, you know, careful in their lives. But some, uh, you know, some fall away for any number of reasons. It can be a inappropriate relationship with somebody of opposite sex. That's a big one. But as we know, there's three G's that can trip up a Christian, certainly a Christian leader. There's girls, there's gold and glory, right? Too much money, too much fame and notoriety. Any of these three things can easily trip up a leader or even Joe Average Christian. So we had another case recently in America. In fact, we had a a number, you could say, even just coming out of the state of Texas. So, uh, yeah, on the one hand, very sad, very tragic. Certainly does the name of Christ doesn't do him much good when it's dragged through the mud this way. But on the other hand, provides lessons for all of us, right? Uh, there, but for the grace of God go I. Let he who stands take heed lest he falls right there's so many warnings either way that we need to learn both of those sorts of truths yeah look i I don't need to mention the individual's name but what is interesting the most recent one you mentioned he's from the reform movement he was 73 years old i'll be honest with you bill when i was 20 if you told me at 73 you could be tempted to have an inappropriate (laughs) relationship i would have said really that would have surprised me it kind of still does Yeah, well, you're never too old, never too famous, you're never too big, you're never too well-known, anything. There's no, you know, there's no limit as to, you know, Satan doesn't knock off, right? Oh, he's 70, we'll stop attacking him. I'm 71, I'm I'm still being attacked, right? So 73, 83, 93, if you're still going. I should have looked it up. I just heard a neat uh, sermon uh, by R.T. Kendall in the U.K., who took over from Martin Lloyd Jones? He must be, I don't know, he must be in his 80s by now. So, anyways, God is uh, always at work, whatever the age, whatever the country, whatever the gender, but Satan is ever at work to, uh, you know, if he doesn't get you at 20 or 30, he'll try to get you at 70 or 80. So, uh, again, the point is, it can happen anytime to anyone. None of us are beyond. This idea of uh, the enemy tempting us, of us falling, and again, the similar passage, I already mentioned 1 Corinthians 10, but Galatians 6, Paul again says, those who've fallen, who have sinned, you know, you are spiritual, you, you know, correct them, but consider yourself also. So you always get this twin message, right? We call out sin, we, you know, there's no temptation that's taken you, that's common to man, but God is able, right, to way uh, provide a way of escape but in the same message watch out yeah you look down on these people right and well you could fall so both of those aspects got to be kept in mind yeah really good point bill because that story of the sons of noah you remember the first one who was made aware of noah's nakedness in the tent and his drunken state he talked Mm. about it inappropriately he judged his dad he laughed at his dad and then actually took his brothers to, to mock his dad. And that's really an example of judgment, isn't it? And the other two brothers, of course, wouldn't even look at their dad, walked backwards with the blanket and dropped it on him. And that just shows that spirit of honor, not to condone Noah's actions, but those brothers left it in God's hands. And I think sometimes we've got to be careful, haven't we, that we don't judge these people? Yeah, again, it's a biblical balancing act. It's always so easy to go off in the wrong tangent here. you got to get the biblical balance right. Uh, last week, I, on another forum, an uh, uh, online prayer group, I was talking about this very issue, and I mentioned, right, the first Peter passage about judgment beginning in the household of God, and I said there's a right and a wrong way to look at this first. The one wrong way, right, is 
well, we can't call out sins in the world. We can't talk about anything pagans are doing because, you know, look how bad the church is. Well, yeah, the church is not ideal. But if we wait for the church to become perfect before we can speak out, before we can be salt and light, right? We're never going to speak out because the church will never be perfect because you and I, Christians, will never be perfect. So that's the wrong way. But the right sense, right, is, yeah, we do have to look at the church. We do have to look at ourselves instead of sitting in judgment, whether it's our pagan friends, some Hollywood celeb and the latest uh, outrage they got into, or some Christian leader, we start first with ourselves, not just, you know, the church is in general, but me, you know, am I on my knees? Am I humble before God? Am I being honest and saying, hey, I can fall just as much as anybody else, given the right circumstances. Um, don't want to go too long in this, but I, a long time ago, there's a movie called Fallen, I believe it was, uh, Michael Douglas, about an ordinary Joe, ordinary guy. He loses his job. He loses his wife. You know, all these circumstances, he ends up going on a real bender. He gets some weapons. He's shooting people. You know, he just he snaps. He, you know, he loses it. Falling Down, I think, was the name of the film. Oh, yeah, and, I remember it. I remember it. He goes yeah, into yeah. a Macca's or a Hungry Jackson. Yeah, yeah well, that's just right. loses that's right. it. And yeah. I wrote it up at the time. I said, hey, that could be me. That could be you. Right circumstances, everything goes against us. The whole world falls apart. And we think, oh, I would never do that. Well, the truth is, without God's grace, anyone could do what uh, Michael Douglas in the film Falling Down had done. So, yeah, we just got to be a bit humble, a bit careful, and say, God, <laughs> you know, without you, we're all toast. Yeah, I I'm glad you brought it up. I'm glad you wrote about because one of our guests on 2020 recently, I was talking to her because she's in a church where, sadly, the pastor fell as well in mm -hmm. Melbourne about a year or so ago, and she was saying, oh, is there a shaking going on in the whole church? And I said, well, yes and no. There's always been a shaking going on in the church since 2,000 years ago. And I said, mm -hmm. the, the majority of churches in the world have about 60 to 70 people in them. We never hear about the pastors. They're just going about yeah. their business, pastoring their flock. And the majority of pastors don't fall morally. It's sadly these high-profile high ones that we hear about and they become news and it, it creates this impression that there's pastors falling all over yeah. the place. But we do need to provide balance, don't we, Bill, and say the majority of pastors don't fall and they run their race faithfully and diligently until the end. Yeah, well, absolutely. And as you say, you don't hear about them, right? Who, who knows about a church with 75 people? You know, it's the big mega churches everybody knows about. But as you say, the great majority, pastors faithfully serving week in, week out, not having a major moral fall or financial fall or any other, right? They're faithful, persistent. Uh, you know, it's the same with, you know, we can look at our other friends in other areas, Catholic priests in abuse, right? Oh, the Catholic church is full of abuse of priests. Well, same thing, probably, right? The overwhelming majority would be good, faithful men, and it's only a handful that the media will be happy to play up. So, yeah, we got to keep that balance, that perspective. Most Christians are doing a good job. Most Christian leaders are being faithful. So all the more reason to pray for our leaders, pray for our pastors, and not put them on a pedestal, you know, and not be surprised that, hey, sometimes some will fall. It's, it's, it's sad and terrible. And the first thing we should do, of course, right, in these situations, pray for that man, pray for his family, pray for his church. Uh, you know, there's ramifications everywhere. Pray that there is real repentance down the line. Uh, you know, it's a big question then. Is restoration possible, right? Can they go back into full-time ministry or something so bad maybe that that's not an option? You know, those are important questions to look at. But at the very least, we got to pray for these guys, pray for the families, the churches, and especially the reputation of Christ and the gospel. Yeah, hey amen. Really well put, Bill. And you mentioned the three G's before gold, girls, glory. Uh, there's many ways of looking at it. Was it fame, females, mm. and uh, and and finances? There's, there's many uh, words we yeah. can use. But let's talk about because pride does come before a fall, doesn't it? And really, the root cause of these falls is pride, isn't it? And it's like you said, these guys become very well known, very famous. And do you think, Bill, it does go to their heads sometimes, and that leads them to make poor choices? Yeah, well, it certainly can. I mean, that 
shows you why it's so important if you have a leader of any kind, pastor, you name it, head of a Bible college, whatever. Uh, if you're surrounding yourself with people, you, well, you want two things, you know, people who are supportive, who are with you, who are committed, but you don't want, right? You don't want a bunch of yes men, you know, who just say yes to everything you say. You want people who can challenge you when necessary, who can hold you to account, who can provide balance, who can, well, you know, everybody's got blind spots, including Christian leaders. So you want to surround yourself with Christians who can discern maybe blind spots or areas of weakness. You know, that's the kind of people you want. But if you surround yourself just with the yes man and those who, uh, you know, always want to do, oh, you're you're fantastic, Pastor. You, you know, you can do no wrong. Those are wrong kind of people to have around you. And uh, so, yeah. Pride, arrogance, you become thinking you're infallible and, you know, you're the best thing since sliced cheese. That's not a good place to be in. So if you're humble on your knees regularly and uh, with the team around you, that's a much safer place to be in. Yeah. And look, I've always uh, admired Billy Graham from a distance because he ran his race. Yep. John Wesley was another one. And um, I think someone said to Wesley, why do you pray so much? Because he prayed for hours every day. And uh, I think it's his old home in London or somewhere in England where you can see the grooves in the carpet in his bedroom where he would kneel next yeah. to his bed and pray. And they said, why do you pray so much? And he said, because I leak every day. And mm -hmm. uh, and that's a humble man, isn't it? Someone who's just yeah. always yeah. on their knees, whether metaphorically or actually on their yeah. knees before God saying, God, I need your help. I can't do this on my own. Yeah, oh, absolutely. You mentioned Billy Graham and I'll mention another guy in my piece. We all know about Billy Graham, right? And women. What did he do? He'd say, I would never, you know, be alone with any woman except my wife, right? So woman wants to come for a prayer. Well, at best, he might go in a very public place uh, with, you know, other colleagues, but never alone. Uh, and, you know, he was mocked, right, ridiculed for that. But, hey, that saved him. That gave him sexual integrity. And one of the guys I mentioned in my piece that I wrote about this latest case um, Albert Moeller had done a short podcast about this guy who fell, and he had a good, well, he said a pastor had told him this long ago, and he said something like, uh, if you want to never have sex, if we can put it this way, with a woman other than your wife, then simply never be alone with a woman other than your wife, right? There's steps you can take. If you don't want to fall or even have the temptation of falling, take the steps necessary so that temptation won't be there. And that's right, the Joseph story. He had decided ahead of time with all the temptations of Potiphar's wife, hey, he knew ahead of time. I'm not going to debate this. I'm not going to argue. He ran. He left the room. He didn't hang around. So uh, there's things we can do ahead of time. And people like Billy Graham were really wise to understand that. Yeah, well, look, I'm no rocket surgeon, Bill, but I think you're right there. Very tough to sleep with someone if you're not with someone. So yeah, I yeah. think, and that, and yeah, all jokes aside, uh, yeah, when I I was a pastor, I I adhered by that as well. I took that on board. I didn't counsel women alone. I didn't have mm. coffee with women alone. Anyone who wants special ministry if it was a woman. I made sure there was another woman present. And you've just got to be smart about these things, haven't you? But Bill, what a great piece. Uh, very topical and I think really important for the Christian church now. It's Bill Muhlenberg from Culture Watch, and you can check him out on Culture Watch. Google it or the BillMuhlenberg.com website, and that's M-U-E-H-L-E-N-B-E-R-G. As always, Bill, thank you so much for your contribution on 2020 Today. Thanks again, Andrew. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.